given uh, a graph right uh, and a pair of vertices u and v we write let's say u uh, is uh, you know uh, u is reachable uh, from v right and uh, v is reachable from u or u is uh, u and v are interconnected right if there is a uh, path uh, connecting u and v right so if I can go from u to v as well as from v to u, then I will say u v uh, is an interconnection relation. Now this interconnection relation, right, u v interconnection relation is uh, an equivalence relation. Uh, I want you to prove this is an equivalence relation showing that it has all the, uh, the properties. And then uh, the equivalence classes under the equivalence relations are called the connected components of v. Right? So for a graph or a diagram, right, the uh, interconnection relation basically partitions into uh, uh, connected components. So components uh, are, so for example, in the previous example, uh, you will see that one, two here is a component, right? Three, four, five is another component. Then uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 is another component, right? So these are the uh, these are the uh, examples in the case of graphs and uh, yeah so uh, the equivalence classes under this uh, relation is called connected component now this uh, tells us, uh, yeah, here is another example, right? You have uh, C1 uh, is a component, C2 is another component, C3 is a component and C4 is a component. Now it follows that the components are actually maximal connected subgraphs by the definition, right? Because it is the equivalent classes under the equivalent relation of uh, reachability, right? So you and we are reachable or interconnected, then uh, uh, you know you are, you are looking at the equivalent class, which means that it is a maximal connected subgraph. So, uh, so what I wanted to emphasize is that one, two, three here uh, is for example a connected subgraph, but it is not a component because it is not maximal because uh, four is also reachable uh, from any of these and similarly any of these are reachable from four, right. So therefore all these four vertices for my component where any subset of that is not a component. Similarly, C1 is a component by itself, C2 is a component by itself, C4 is a component by itself. Now, uh, D uh, can be a digraph and then again the interconnection relation U to V, uh, if and only there is a UV path and a BU path, right. Then the uh, interconnection relation is an equivalent relation. And again, the equivalent class are called strongly connected components. Okay. So the strongly connected components are the equivalent class under the relation for the directed graphs and for the other, it is the... Uh... Now, so if you look at this, can you find out the strongly connected components? So think about this for a minute before uh, you look at the uh, solution, right? So it is it's, it's fairly easy. You can verify that. This part, including the vertices 4, 5, 6, uh, 10 and 11, forms uh, a strongly connected component because you can go from any vertex to any vertex. Uh, for example, 10 to 5, I can go through 11. 10 to 4, I can go from you know, going to 5 and then going to 4. Similarly to 6, I can go through 4 and then to 6. Similarly, 6 to 4, I can go 6 to 5 I can go and since I can go from 5 to any other vertex, uh, this also allows us to uh, make sure that this is uh, a strongly connected uh, uh, component. Now uh, uh, that is because I cannot, uh, for example, I cannot go uh, from 8 to 6 so therefore this part will not be there. Now so this is one component. Then you have another component, uh, 7, 8, and 9. One can see that it's a directed cycle and uh, there's a reachability between any two. Then 1 by itself is a component because I cannot uh, reach anywhere from 1. And then 2 by itself is a component 
3 by itself is a term. By 2 itself, because uh, 2 to 3 I can go, but I cannot go back uh, from 3 to 2. And 3 again is uh, itself a component, I cannot go anywhere from 3. So we have this uh, uh, strongly uh, connected component. So that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. Now, uh, a nice homework is to show the following that if C1 and C2 are two strongly connected components, then if there are edges between the vertices of C1 and C2, then they must all be in the same direction. Right? Either all the edges are oriented from C1 to C2, that its uh, starting point is in C1 and ending point in C2, or uh, all the edges are starting at uh, vertices in C2 and uh, ends and the vertices of the component C1. Now a couple of uh, more definitions. So if uh, A and B are uh, subsets of the vertex at V, X is a subset of, well, let's say, the vertex at union edge set. So X is some vertices and edges. Now uh, if uh, A, B and X have this property that every AB path in the graph G uh, contains a vertex or edge uh, from the set X, right? So then uh, if I remove, right, X, then A and B e are basically disconnected, right? So basically, the, uh, we can call X to be a separating uh, set. So X separates A and B. Uh, if uh, uh, you know X is a subset of B union E, such that every AB path uh, in G contains a vertex uh, or edge uh, from X. Now, if I'm just looking at a uh, uh, subset of vertices alone, right? X is subset of B is separating. Then X is called a vertex cut, right? So a separating uh, vertex set is called a vertex cut. Similarly, a separating edge set, right, if x is subset of E alone, right, there are no vertices in x, but just edges, then it is a, an edge cut, right, you remove, remove the edges of uh, x, I can uh, destroy the connection between uh, A and B, right, it's basically uh, an uh, uh, edge cut, A, B edge cut, and similarly A, B vertex cut. Now a cut edge or a cut vertex uh, in a graph is uh, either an edge or a vertex whose removal increases the number of components of G. Okay, uh, right? Uh, and uh, or uh, you know one can one can modify it slightly by saying that uh, uh, either it increases the number of components or uh, it gives you the trivial vertex. Uh, in in some cases that could be useful, but for the time being we will we will just. Uh, uh, we will assume uh, this. So a cut edge or a cut vertex uh, is basically an edge or a vertex whose removal increases the number of components of G. Now, uh, here are some examples, right? So if I look at the entire uh, graph, then uh, A is a cut vertex. Why is that? Because if I remove A, then the number of components in the graph increases from 2 to 3, right? So then there are three components now, and therefore A was a cut vertex. I just removed A, of course, it also removed the edges incident to A. Similarly, I can see that B is a cut vertex, C is a cut vertex, and D is also a cut vertex. So this uh, disconnects, so therefore uh, this is a cut vertex. Similarly, D is cut vertex. So we have several cut vertex. Now what about the cut edges? Uh, e is the only cut edge here. If I remove E, it increases the number of components. And there is no other edge whose removal increases the number of components. Right? Just by removing one edge, you cannot increase the number of so E is a cut edge and A, B, C, D are uh, cut vertices of this graph. Now, if you think about the cut edges, uh, you can show the following theorem. Right? An edge of a graph is a cut edge if and only if it does not belong to any cycle in the graph. Okay? Now, can you think of a similar uh, result for cut vertices also? Right? So, can you say something about the cut vertices? Not exactly the same, but uh, think of uh, think of this. Now, uh, 
uh, here we are going to prove this theorem that uh, uh, an edge is a cut edge if and only if it does not belong to a cycle in the graph. Now, usually a cut edge is also uh, called a bridge, right? So we also have this notion uh, bridge. So if you see that you know, E is a bridge, then uh, you can take, uh, you can assume that it is basically uh, an edge whose removal increases the number of components. Now the deletion of an edge uh, affects only its component, right? So to prove this theorem, you notice that you know if if I have several uh, components in the graph to start with, and if I delete an edge, you know, the number of components in the graph increases only if the the component itself itself increases the number of components because you know this edge cannot change the connectivity of any other component, right? So therefore, without loss of generality, we can assume G is connected because if it increases the number of components, then it must uh, definitely increase the number of components. Uh, from its uh, its part, right? Uh, its its own component. So uh, we will start the assumption that uh, our graph is connected. Now, first part uh, to prove one direction is very easy, right? If you take e to be any edge, right? Let's say e equal to x y, then g minus e is connected, right? Uh, means that g minus e has an x y part because. Uh, uh, you know, by a graph being connected, we say that there is a path between any two vertices. So now, g minus x y is connected means that x to y there must be a path. Now, x y if there is a path, take the x y path, and in the graph we have the edge e, right? Now, x y, uh, you know, edge e basically connects x to y. So if I have an x y path, then the edge uh, e allows us to go from y to x. Now, the definition of a cycle is that you take a path, right? U v path, and then take the edge v to u. Right. So that is the definition of a cycle. So therefore, uh, from uh, that, you see that the graph uh, must contain a cycle, right? So if uh, removal of an edge uh, keeps the graph connected, then we know that uh, this edge is part of a cycle. Now we have to prove the converse. So to prove the converse, we assume that uh, E is in some cycle of thing, right? We have to show that after removing the edge e, the entire graph remains connected. Now, for any uh, pair of vertices u and v, uh, we can uh, uh, we have to show that g has some uh, uv path, right? Now, uh, if you start with uh, the graph g, the g is you know the, we are looking at a graph which is connected because without loss of generality, we can assume that. So therefore, since g is connected, uh, g has a uv path. So let us call this path as P. Now, if the edge E that we are going to remove, right, uh, is uh, not part of the path P, then uh, removing this will not change the connectivity of U and V, right? So it will still be connected. U to V will be still connected. Right? So there is a path from U to V in G minus E. Right? So U is interconnected to V in G minus E if uh, E is not a part of the path P. Uh, suppose uh, E is part of the path P, right? So if E is pa actually part of the path P, then uh, you know we can we can assume that uh, uh, by you know by symmetry. So you have you have this U V for any any arbitrary pair of vertices we are taking, right? So U V there is a path, and uh, U and V are connected or not in the remaining graph is what we want to check. So in the previous example we said that. If E is not part of the UV path that we are considered, then you are, we are not going to be disconnected after removing, right? Because there is the path P itself is still there. So our assumption is that, okay, uh, the, path, the edge E is part of the path. And then if I remove, what happens? So if E is part of the path, then uh, the UV path must go through the edge E, right? And uh, then uh, I have, a, you know, U to X, and uh, x to y edge and then y to v path, right? Or you, it can be u to y, then y to x and x to v. But because of symmetry, I can assume one of these, right? So I can say that in, in the uv path, the edge, uh, you know, x, y, x appears before y in the path. So now with this assumption, uh, right? So you have, uh, you have the property that, uh, u to x there is a path, right? u x interconnection is there. Then x y the edge is there. And then y to v the, uh, 
uh, adjacent. So the, the, the three uh, interconnection relations by transitivity will give you U2, V is connected. But now we have removed the edge XY. So what happens if I remove XY? Now if I remove XY, we said that, uh, you know, there was a part, you know, the edge E was a part of a cycle, right? Now because it was part of a cycle, X to Y, there must be another uh, path or a walk, right? So there is an XY walk and, 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 you know, together with the XY edge, right, with this path, XY path, it was forming a cycle. But now, if I remove the edge XY, still X to Y, there is this path, right, because it was part of the cycle and then we added that. So now X and Y are interconnected through this path, right, in C, right? So if C is the cycle, Then through the remaining edges of C, there is a path connecting X to Y. So X and Y are interconnected, right? So any walk is basically saying that there is also a path, right? So now U to X, there is a uh, reachability, right? So U uh, to X are reachable. Then X to Y uh, reachable through the path uh, in C. Then Y to V is reachable through the original path P, right? So it's a sub -path, uh, sub part of the path. So u to x the path through the original path y to v the original path is still there then x to y there is a path through the cycle c that was uh, x y was part now the interconnection relation is uh, an equivalence relation so therefore because it is transitive if uh, u x uh, there is a connection and x y there is a connection and y to v there is a connection then by transitivity u to v there is a connection so therefore, uh, uh, there must be reachability between U to V. And therefore, C minus E is also connected. So this is the uh, completion of the proof. Now the graph, uh, a, a graph G is defined to be K connected. If uh, I cannot remove less than K vertices to disconnect the graph. Okay? So I start with the graph G, which is connected, let's say, right? Uh, and then, if I cannot, uh, you know, if I have to remove uh, less than, uh, less than, uh, 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 you know, I cannot remove less than k vertices to make the graph disconnected, then, uh, you know, the graph is said to be k connected. Now, uh, there is, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, so this is uh, this is what's called uh, k connecting. So I, we, we, you know, by removing less than less than k vertices, I cannot disconnect. The graph. Then the graph is k connected. Now the connectivity uh, of a, you know, the vertex connectivity of a graph is the largest k such that g is k connected, right? So if I, you know, if I make uh, kappa plus one, so it's kappa of g is the largest k such that g is k connected. Now if I take uh, kappa plus one. And then there is a subset of vertices whose removal is considered, right? So therefore, uh, the connectivity is the largest case so that G minus K is connected. Uh, and uh, here are uh, some examples, right? So if you look at this graph, uh, this graph is too connected because one can verify that there is no cut vertex in the first part, right? We don't have any cut vertex here. On the other hand, uh, it is uh, too connected uh, uh, and its connectivity too because I can find a, uh, uh, no, a separating set of size two, right? For example, this vertex and this vertex. So if I remove these two, then there is no path from, let's say, one to three, right? So therefore, the number of components increases. So therefore, this is a separating set and then uh, you get uh, uh, that. Now we have to remove two vertices to make the graph disconnected and uh, with two you can actually disconnect it and therefore connectivity is actually two. On the other hand, this graph has connectivity zero because the entire graph uh, is not connected. So, you know, even removing zero vertices, the graph is still disconnected. On the other hand, if I just look at one part of this, right, let's say I'm just looking at this as a graph, then this graph has connectivity one because it has cut vertices. This is a cut vertex, removal disconnects the graph, it increases the number of components, and the, the graph by itself is connected.
Now, a graph uh, G is L edge connected if uh, G minus uh, F is connected for every F uh, subset of V. Okay. So, similar to vector connectivity, I can talk about edge connectivity. So, we say a graph is L edge connected if uh, G minus F is connected for every uh, F uh, in every subset of edges where the cardinality is strictly less than L. Right. By removing less than L, I cannot disconnect the graph. So therefore, it is at least okay. edge connectivity is the largest again, the largest uh, uh, natural number such that G is L edge connected. Now, uh, here is another uh, uh, set of examples. If you if you look at this uh, graph, what are the edge connectivities, right? So if you look at the first graph, it is three edge connected because uh, without really you know with, uh, I cannot remove just two edges to make the graph uh, disconnected, right? This part. Right. So uh, now, so therefore, but I can remove just three edges. Right, to make it disconnected. So therefore, uh, it's a uh, it's three edge uh, connected. On the other hand, the graph on the right side. is uh, two edge connected because uh, you know I cannot remove just one edge there is no bridge uh, but I have to remove two edges uh, I can remove two edges to make the graph disconnect right? uh, these two for example right so therefore its an edge connectivity is two uh, and uh, the edge connectivity for the previous graph was uh, three now, what about the edge connectivity of the graph uh, three number here, right? What about this? So, if you look at the edge connectivity of this, uh, one can, uh, you know, it's not immediately clear what is it. But if you look through it carefully, you will see that it's actually two, right? You can find a uh, two uh, edges whose removal disconnects the graph. So, what are these two? So you should look for it uh, uh, before you uh, continue. So if I remove these two cross edges, then you will see that uh, you know the graph is actually disconnected, right? This part, uh, there are these two parts which are uh, superimposed, and there are no edges connecting. Let's say. Uh, the blue vertices to the uh, other uh, remaining vertices, right? So uh, the graph is uh, two connected. Then uh, what about this one? Uh, here the vertex connectivity is actually one, right? You can verify that vertex connectivity is one because it's a cut vertex. But the edge connectivity, for example, is two because I can remove these two edges. Uh, to disconnect the graph, right? Either these two or the these two, right? Either of these will disconnect the graph. Now, uh, so you can verify this and then uh, look at several examples. I I encourage you to look through several examples before uh, uh, you know before uh, continuing further. Then uh, you will observe the following that uh, for any graph, the vertex connectivity kappa of G is upper bounded by the edge connectivity lambda of G. And then uh, this is upper bounded by uh, the minimum degree uh, of the graph. So this should be kind of intuitively clear, but I want you to uh, give a formal proof. So think about this why. Why vertex connectivity is less than or equal to edge connectivity? Less than or equal to minimum degree, and we will use this res uh, result uh, later uh, in the. Uh, now, <clears throat> here is another important uh, notion that we want to look at, uh, which is that of bipartite graphs. So, graph G is bipartite if uh, I can 
right the vertex set as a disjoint union of two uh, sets v1 and v2 let's say such that both uh, v1 and v2 are independent sets so if you remember what are independent set an independent set is a subset of vertices where there are no edges between these vertices right so then it's an independent set so if i can partition the entire graph to two parts right two independent sets and all the edges are basically across right so it goes from one of the sets to the other but these two are independent so there are no edges so i so here is a nice representation right of the bipartite graph right so i have this part let's say uh, let's say a and there is this part b right so a and b are independent sets uh, and a, a to b uh, you know the edges are between a and b right so any edge has one of the endpoints in a and the other endpoints in b so the induced subgraphs on v1 and v2 right uh, have no edges then it's a uh, uh, independent set so an example uh, on the right hand side right so the the vertices marked in uh, red form an independent set there are no edges between them and the remaining vertices form another independent set therefore the graph is uh, bipartite so you can verify that all the edges are going from the red vertices to the other vertices now uh, a graph uh, is a, this is a very important theorem a graph is uh, said to be bipartite i mean a graph is bipartite if and only if the graph has no odd segments okay so this theorem uh, i want you to try to think to prove uh, we will prove it here but uh, just uh, think about this for some time and one part is immediate right so uh, i can see that if the graph is uh, bipartite then it cannot have odd segments why is that because if the graph is bipartite uh let us think of any cycle right i start from a vertex then after going and taking edges i have to come back to that vertex now since the graph is bipartite if i you know if i take any edge it actually alternates the sides right and therefore uh right uh, since any walk alternates between x and y to return to the starting vertex uh, you have to take an even number of edges and uh, because every uh, closed walk is uh, of uh, odd length i mean even length uh, there is no odd cycle because uh, if the odd cycle itself is a uh, closed odd walk right so therefore uh, this is clear now to prove the other uh, side suppose the graph has no odd cycle so we want to construct a bipartition for the graph so we are going to prove the graph is bipartite by constructing a bipartition now let's take h to be any components of uh, any component of the graph C, okay so because if uh, if the graph is bipartite then every component is bipartite right because uh, you know i i have a partition into two independent sets then I look at the components each one has a partition into two independent sets so therefore i just start with one of the components so h be any component of g and take a vertex u in h now what i can do is that uh for uh, the vertex u in uh, h every uv walk right uh, so so take the starting vertex u then fix any vertex any other vertex in the component then look at every uv walk in the graph because there you know if i take any vertex outside the component there is no walk at all right so i can look at the uv walks uh, from any vertex u to the vertices b now once you fix uh, a vertex v also right then you can have several uv walks right in the graph there could be several uh, paths or walks between a pair of vertices so look at every uv walk my claim is that every uv walk has the same parity which means that the length of every uv walk is either all odd or all of uh, the walks are even length walks. now uh, why is this true right so our assumption is that we start with a graph which has no odd cycle then we take uh, some component then i start from some you know fix some vertex in this component then i look at all the uh, you know u uh, v walk for every vertex v right every vertex v i take and then find the all the u v walk now u v walks for every uh, you know once you fix v every u v walk has the same parity right it is all uh, odd length or odd even length 
Now, why is that? Suppose you have to uh, different UV walk uh, with different varieties, right? So, U to V, there is an odd walk. And then U to V, there is suppose an even walk, right? Now, so let us say that W1 is a UV walk of even parity and W2 is a UV walk of odd parity. Now, the, the walks may be intersecting, may not be intersecting, right? Uh, you know, we don't we don't care about uh, you know they are intersecting or not when we are looking we are talking about walks because walk itself can intersect itself. So let us look at all possible UV walks. So I have a walk W1 from U to V. Then there is an odd walk uh, U to V uh, which is W2. Right. So one is even and one is odd. Similarly, you know uh, it could be like intersecting right U to uh, W uh, U W1 right. V, UV is an even uh, walk. Then W2 is an odd uh, walk. Now, no matter what, I look at the U2 V walk and then V2 uh, U walk through W2. So I take W1 first, then take W2. So if I go from U to V through W1, then V2 U through W2, or in this case, It could be repeating vertices, edges, subparts, everything, right? Doesn't matter. Whatever it is, I look at this uh, walk from U to U itself. Uh, now, this walk is a, you know, uh, you know, join of uh, two uh, walks, W1 and W2. So, the length of this walk is the sum of the uh, length. So, it is basically an odd length closed walk. So, I get a closed uh, walk of odd length. Now, we proved... Uh, right, at least as a homework I gave you to prove that if there is a closed walk of uh, odd length, then it must contain uh, an odd cycle. Right? A closed walk of even length does not tell you there is an even cycle. But there is a closed walk of odd length, it tells you uh, there is an odd cycle. So I want you to also uh, come up with an example of a, a graph uh, 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 with uh, some uh, closed even length walk and show that uh, this walk uh, does not contain uh, a cycle as a subgraph. But you can have, of course, uh, uh, cycles, but you have examples without cycles. So that's what I want you to do. And uh, once you have the property that I, uh, every closed walk contains a uh, closed walk of odd length contains an odd cycle, you will see that the graph must contain an odd cycle, which is a contradiction, right? So the U to V, V to U close walk, which is the, uh, you know, which is the walk uh, uh, W1 plus the W2 reverse uh, contains uh, uh, an odd set, right? So now once you have this, we know that every walk must have the same parity, right? So once you have U and every uh, fixed B, UV walks all must have the same parity. So since all of them have the same parity, now I can say that if UV walk is of even length, uh, you know, I collect such B. UV walk is of odd length, I also collect such B, right? So pick out the vertices which has, you know, odd walks from U and pick out the other vertices which has even walks from U. Because the graph is connected, the, you know, the edge component, uh, edge is connected. Every uh, vertex other than U, right, there is a walk from U to, I mean, of course, including U itself. Uh, U to every other vertex, there is a, uh, there is a walk, either of odd length or even length. So, collect them together and then form uh, the subgraph as follows, right. So, so the partition as follows. So, V1 of the H is defined as set of all uh, vertices in H such that UV walk has even parity. Then V2 of H is the set of all uh, uh, vertices such that UV walk has odd parity. Claim is that V1 and V2 forms a partition of X into independences. So V1 is independent and V2 is independent. Now why is this? Right? So we have to prove that V1 is independent and V2 is independent. So let us take one of them so that there cannot be an edge uh, between any two vertices. So if X and Y are vertices in this V2, let's say, and XY is, let's say, uh, is an edge, right? Now, if XY is an edge, I claim that uh, the graph contains an odd cycle. Now, why is that? Because if XY is an edge, U to V, there is some walk, right? Whatever it is, 
I mean U2X, right? U2X there is a var which has uh, let's say odd parity. Then uh, U2Y there is a var which has also odd parity, which means that their sum has exactly even number of edges. Now together with the edge XY, you can get U2X, X2Y, and Y2U is a closed walk of odd length which gives an odd cycle, right? Odd walk and then there's an odd cycle. Similarly, if uh, ux is even, again, ux is even, y u is also even, right? Because I collected all the vertices with the same parity to v and v2. And therefore, even plus even plus 1 is again odd. So, therefore, I again get an odd side. So, therefore, uh, uh, we get the uh, fact that uh, v1 of h and v2h which are independent. Therefore, uh, uh, they are both. Uh, independent sets and therefore it's a bipartition. Now, for each component, now I can get a bipartition using this, right? So, if there is no odd cycle in each component, uh, I can get a bipartition. Now, I have bipartitions of several components, I can put them together, right? If whichever way I want, right? You know, V1 uh, of the first graph, V2 of the second graph, again, V1 of the second graph, uh, V1 of the first graph, V2 of the first graph, V1 of the second graph, V2 of the second graph, etc. You have the partition. And that will give you the bipartition of the entire graph. So, uh, here are some homework questions. Uh, so, let uh, G be a connected graph and uh, P and Q are paths of uh, maximum length in G. So, that P and Q must share a common matrix. Okay. So, this is a nice homework. Uh, then, if uh, G is a connected graph and PQR are parts of maximum lengths, can you show that, right? There is a vertex uh, common to all the three uh, parts, P, Q, and R. Uh, either true or it is true, but uh, I want uh, to emphasize that this is not an easy problem. The second uh, question. Uh, so if you don't get an answer, don't worry about it, but uh, try to think of this for something. Okay? It's a very interesting question. If you get an answer, uh, please feel free to let me know. Now the question three, uh, let W be a closed work uh, that uh, has no uh, cycle uh, uh, of the graph. Then I show that uh, an edge occurs twice uh, in succession in W. Okay? So suppose we have a closed work which does not contain any cycle of the graph, then some edge must occur twice in succession in W. Right? For example, I mean it, it will be reversing, right? I, I go from U to W, then W to uh, you back. This must happen for at least one edge if a uh, closed work does not contain any cycle. Then the fourth question is that if G is a graph and uh, X is a cut vertex, then show that in the complement of the graph, right? Complement of the graph is the graph obtained by making all the edges as non edges and all the non edges as edges. So in this complement of the graph, uh, X is not a cut vertex. So these four questions I want you to. Uh, think about and try to solve and uh, uh, with that uh, uh, let us stop for today.